and TD Ameritrade Network contributor Jenny Horn to Fast Market. Good morning to you, Jenny. Let's talk some Target 207.43. The stock's down small today as it leads into earnings. This, of course, is post the Walmart earnings. But in many ways, these companies are tied together, but they're very, very different. Yes, absolutely. And actually, initially today, they actually saw a pop following Walmart's earnings. Now they're lower, like you just mentioned. So sort of a mixed reaction there because pre-market actually saw they were trading higher. But I think it's important to note that retail sort of dominate this week in earnings. And few retailers have really been able to capitalize on some of these shifting consumer trends over the past year than a Target, a Walmart, some of these big box names. And a huge reason behind that is just because these companies sort of already have the right tools in place prior to March of 2020. Target is sort of one of the most notorious one-stop shop shopping destinations with an assortment of its own and exclusive brands as well as some popular national brands and of course its grocery segment and now it's expanded its omni-channel capabilities like same-day delivery with its partnership with Shipt while also expanding its drive up and order pickup and also sort of increasing its online presence. I mean there was a day when we would talk about how you know Amazon was a huge huge looming threat to Target. I actually think they've done a very good job sort of wading those waters. And it was actually during the pandemic that Target delivery was faster to get to me than say Amazon. So for that reason, they've been a huge successor of the last year. Analysts are expecting revenue to come in just over $21 billion, which indicates about 10% year over year growth on earnings of about 220 a share, which would be a pretty stark, stark increase from 59 cents a share reported last year. Now, the one area they really, a lot of analysts are focused on are their margins. They have a lot of higher costs, of course, associated with their higher digital fulfillment now. And of course, we're still seeing some headwinds with supply chain and some COVID-related expenses, like some of the additional pay they've had to give out over the last year to their employees. But I mean, if you take a look at Walmart's earnings, they beat on both top and bottom line, and they actually cited stim stimulus spending on stronger growth. Plus, they also cited some of this boost in apparel. So we're actually seeing apparel to be what analysts are saying potentially could be the next big growth catalyst for Target. As we know, right, they, they offer exclusive brands in addition to then, you know, some of these ma major brands like a Levi. They also have a partnership going with Ulta. But the clothing segment of Target's had accounted for about 19% of their total business before the pandemic hit and then slowed. So many people are saying that, you know, with the re economy reopening, people want to go shopping again. People need things to wear that aren't sweatpants. And this could be the next growth driver for a target, which is what our first tweeter today talks about. Jeff Mackey is a notorious retail Twitter follower. He's a great follow. If you ever need someone in retail, he's awesome. But he actually tweeted today, Walmart says apparel was strong. And then he mentions Target. So I, typically, I'd like to think, although these companies are different, like you mentioned, Alex, there is still a strong correlation in, in sort of the bulk of their business. Mm -hmm. And if apparel is coming back, I see this also being reflected in Target. So we'll have to wait and see, of course, on that. But Target also announced something interesting Monday. This will, of course, not be included in their first quarter report, but they just announced you can either pick up or drive up with your with an alcohol delivery at 1,200 locations. And then actually with their ship partnership, you can get alcohol delivered through 600 Target locations. So that is what our next tweeter talks about because I thought that was a fun conversation, which she says, in other Target news, if you've been waiting to add wine or hard seltzer to your Target drive up order, today is your day. So I loved this because it really, I mean, I know it doesn't impact this earnings quarter, but the company actually said that their adult beverage category is one of their fastest growing within their food and beverage segment. And it's, it's no mystery why I feel like hard seltzer is all we really talk about lately in terms of food and beverage. But I mean, I really think what is important about this is it just shows the way they're sort of expanding. They're growing that delivery segment. They're making themselves sort of dominant in this space. And this is an area where, you know, Amazon can't really compete with a traditional brick and mortar because it does not really have those. So Target could potentially be, you know, seeing a leg up there, but just showing really the vast scale, which they're growing. They're sort of omni-channel presence, Kevin. You know, Jenny, this stock has clearly been a pandemic winner as people have adopted, you know, that embraced that one-stop shopping place. That said, if I would ever hear that Jenny Horn bought any of her clothes at a Target, 
I think I would choke on my iced tea and, and maybe <laughs> pass out. But that being said, there's no way you're buying clothes at Target, Jenny Hort. Come on. But that being no, said, they do have... <laughs> come on. No, but that you're being right. said, what you said about Target is exactly right because they have... What they did, if you remember shows much earlier than this. They were investing in stores as fulfillment centers even before the pandemic hit. So they were uniquely prepared for this to happen. And, and the Walmart has closed the gap. It was really Target, what was the brick and mortar retailer that was the most prepared for, I, I think, the pandemic with curbside pickup, and now they are they keep adapting. They invested before the pandemic, and now they're taking the money they're making, and they're investing during the pandemic and now post-pandemic. So this is a company that keeps investing in the e-commerce part of their business, and though that costs money, and paying people costs money, and wages cost money, this is still a company uniquely set up for where we find ourselves right now, guys. Yeah, and it shows in the stock price, as uh, you guys both pointed out, it's been a huge winner uh, going back to prior to the pandemic, up 65% nearly uh, from the beginning of 2020. Jenny, great setup as always. We appreciate you taking the time and joining us here this morning. As we say goodbye to Jenny, I want to welcome in the co-founder of LikeFolio.com, Landon Swan. And I know we're really going to focus, Landon, on some of this fulfillment and uh, kind of the moves that Target has made to be prepared for this, as Kevin laid out. But they've also spent a lot of money over the last few years on uh, kind of reinventing the store, making it a more positive experience. And maybe if, uh, you know, girls my age or in my generation aren't buying uh, clothes at Target to Kevin and Jenny's point, which maybe they are, I can tell you if my girlfriend and her friends are any indication, they're certainly going to the home and garden section and they're, they're, they're spending time in these stores. So, Lynn, how important is it that things get reopened, uh, we can start going back to stores and buying things? Is Target kind of a win-win in both scenarios, stay at home and reopening? Yeah, you know what? That's a great point. I think they've set themselves up to be the winner in either one. And, you know, Kevin talked about how they were, you know, getting to that point where they're going to fulfill through the stores. They're going to compete with Amazon before the pandemic. Clearly good timing on that. And of course it's paid off and, and it's actually changing behavior where people are using that omni channel. They're using the digital, the ship, the pickup curbside, all of that more than they used to, even as stores are still opening and they're reopening. So it's a change in behavior. But if you do want to go to the shore store, walk around and find something, uh, they, you know, the way that they have diversified and they've kind of got something for everyone. Uh, I think that, you know, they've positioned themselves absolutely to dominate as things reopen and you can see here on this chart just people talking about the you know getting things delivered through uh, fulfillment through either shipped or drive up or uh, one day delivery single day delivery it's up 62 percent not year over year because those are insane comps during this time last year but versus 2019 which shows you that Yes, there was a big spike during the initial parts of COVID, and you can see it on the chart. But as it pulled back, it has actually increased since then. So uh, it, adoption is continuing as more and more people are sticking with that and telling their friends, hey, this is a really appealing thing to do. It's very easy. Uh, and so, yeah, again, I think that they're doing a great job. But if you look at Walmart, I mean, they beat on top and bottom. And they had a very small gain, and now they're selling off a little bit. Target's down on the day. I think expectations are incredibly high for Target. I think a lot of this is likely priced in. Uh, they've got a 52-week high of 10 bucks from where they're at, and that was last week. So they are very close to 52-week highs, uh, all-time highs, actually. And I think expectations may be a little high for Target because everything that we're talking about has been – you know, that has been detailed in the last quarter's report, or it's been talked about in Walmart's report. Uh, there's nothing unknown here, and I think expectations may be a bit high for Target right now. Landon, for all the good news about Target and what they're doing and how they continue to invest in their business, there, there, there's a storm looming on the horizon, and that is, for a company like this, all these things that they're talking about cost money. 
and employees and wages, they're, they're, they're going to eat into some of these profits as I think what's going on right now with rehiring of people and adding people, the wages are not coming down. They're going to go higher. And so I'm worried about the expense part of Target and how they do wages and benefits. And as they change these stores around, all that costs money. And so even though they're doing extremely well, there are things that are, that are going to chip away at how much well, the, how much better they, they, they do. So how, what are you hearing or are you hearing anything about costs and wages and benefits and things like that and how much they're going to have to pay these people to come work for them? Yeah, it's a great point. There's a lot of businesses out there that can't get employees. I mean, if you've ever tried to get an Uber in the last couple of months, the prices are ridiculous because yep. nobody's doing it. Uh, restaurants are paying bonuses for signing on. I mean, there, it's just hard to get an employee right now between unemployment, uh, stimulus checks, uh, and just what's happening with inflation. It's tough. So uh, that's going to work both ways. You've got inflation that's going to drive costs up because employees need to make more. you got the potential for a $15 minimum wage uh, nationwide. And of course, anytime you talk about a stock price, a lot of people don't realize that since that's priced in dollars, the denominator is dollars. As that dollar gets weaker, by default, the stock gets stronger. So you've got inflation kind of working for the stock price and against the company as far as expenses go. So mm -hmm. it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. I will say, though, that they, you know, obviously they're very well prepared for the reopening. Uh, they've got uh, their average ticket size last quarter was up 13%. Their 95% of their digital sales are fulfilled by the stores, which is exactly to your point earlier, Kevin. They have been setting up for this versus an Amazon who obviously doesn't have stores, is not doing that. It's all warehouse. Uh, so it, digital mentions are up 60% versus uh, 2019. It's, it's looking up for Target. But again, all of this is priced in. And if you look at what the stock is doing, if you go kind of a trader's mindset, uh, we're ten dollars away from all-time highs, and the market maker move is ten dollars. To me, that really sets up a, a potential trade where maybe you're selling the two seventeen fifty call and buying a two twenty as insurance, uh, setting up that kind of vertical spread. So uh, I think it's going to be tough for them to beat more than Walmart did, and look what happened with Walmart. And then to say, you know what, they're going to beat so much that they're going to scream through and, and break all-time highs. I think that's a tough ask. So for me, I really like the setup as far as a trader goes, is the 217 high, uh, playing that as, as the max profit on a potential vertical. Uh, I, I love those, those thoughts because it's not as cut and dry as some earnings season. We've been, we've been spending a lot of time talking about that, regardless of uh, how strong Target's doing, to your point about things being priced in or the low bar or whatever it may be. Earnings beats have not been rewarded this quarter, and those that have, that were the exceptions, they didn't hold their gains uh, in, in many in many cases. So I love that point. But Landon, last thoughts here as we kind of zoom out, we talk long term for Target because I know some of our viewers uh, want to know kind of the long term horizon for these companies as well. With the trends in terms of moving out of cities to to the suburbs, building homes amongst the millennials, I'm sure many will spend time in Target. It always seems to be ahead of the curve. Uh, its partnership with Starbucks. You kind of look at those things, and then you look at maybe inflation and its impact on a recovery, inflation and its impact on costs. Of the two sides, the good and the bad, where does like Folio project out in terms of, of optimism around this company? Are, are they set up nicely for the future, or are there some worrisome signs uh, around the, the corner as well? I think that you have to look at how the management and executive team have executed over the last five years. And I, it would be hard to say anything but A or A plus on a, on a scorecard, right? So they're going to have more decisions to make in the future and they've done so well in the past. Not only have they set themselves up to be the winner post pandemic and, and during the pandemic, uh, but I also have to have faith in them that whatever comes next, they're going to be making those decisions. So as you mentioned, we've got a lot of trends, people moving out of the cities, uh, going towards these areas where targets are going to be more accessible. Uh, and plus, even if they're not, you've got all the digital delivery in the city. So I really think they're kind of hitting on all fronts. Uh, and they've done a really good job targeting their demographic. They knew who they're working. Uh, they're trying to get into the store. They've got the Starbucks partnership like you talked about. Um, everything that they do is driving towards that same customer. And I think that they're doing a fantastic job at it so as a trader you know i don't think they're breaking all-time highs here but if for some reason they sell off five or ten percent 
it could be a good investment opportunity long term if they do if the stock is on sale at that point. Uh, this earnings report looks like tough to me. I don't see them breaking through an all-time high, but yeah, definitely if they if they pull back at all, it could be a buying opportunity long term. Good stuff. The co-founder of LifeFolio.com, Landon Swan. It is always a pleasure. We appreciate you joining us. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Kev, Landon 